1,700 CEOs in 67 different countries were asked, what do inspiring leaders do? What did they have in common? They said these three things, the ability to collaborate with others, getting along, two, customer needs. But the third one, as a confidant to world leaders and as a coach to many all over the world, they all had the ability to inspire others. That's what this show is about today. We're gonna to take you to another level in your business. If you're an entrepreneur, business owner, the head of a nonprofit organization, then this show is for you. I'm Coach Ron Kardashian, and we're taking you to the next level. If you're just joining us, welcome, welcome. I'm Coach Ron Kardashian. We've had a powerful time with my wonderful guest, Dr. Lance Well, now we've been talking about the spirit of excellence and operating at a higher level of thinking, living, doing, overcoming. It's just been absolutely powerful. And before we get into our segment today, we're going to be talking about business, excellence in business, from ethics to development to wealth management. I call it the self-worth net worth principle. But before we begin, I've got some people that have called in. They've sent in some emails. We wanted to go ahead and answer your questions. Make sure you follow me on Twitter and Facebook and get the download direct. Send in your questions. I want to be able to answer them with precision and authentication and, above all, clarity. The first one that came in, and I'd like to bring Dr. Lance in it. Will you welcome him to the show for me, Doc? Good to have you back Good again. Back. Good to be back. We're going to start right in with um, understanding questions insights and dimensions from the public right. and one of them came in says uh, I'm a single parent wanting to start a home business how do I get started you want to head that off yeah sure you know there never has been an era like today when a stay-at-home mom or an individual can utilize technology Absolutely. and literally build a yes. business yes. Uh, through uh, marketing on the internet yes. and understanding how to make that work yes and and there, there are a hundred moving parts to that, which we don't want to drill into right now. But the main idea is that the Lord gave me a word at the beginning of the year for my wife and me. And he said, I want you to dial back to the home advantage because we're so fragmented. Families are so fragmented. Yes. And even though we're dealing with a business module, the yes. number one need, and you see this too, yes. that hits the busy professional yes. is the marriage. Yes. So Very the home important. advantage is the Lord said, I started with a man and a woman in a garden. I want you to recapture dominion in your home <laughs> and restore the garden. Boy. Because I will walk with you in the cool of the day yes. with your wife yes. and together yes. she's a partner in your business. There's a yes. lot of folks that are professionals that don't come together in yes. their business. It's an old school model where, this, the, where the guys, the, the, you know, the hotshot CEO and the wife's at home. Yes. You know this, and I, I'll bet you've got stories too. Every multimillionaire, billionaire that I talked to who almost lost everything, the wife was the intercessor and the prophet who warned him about people he was getting yes. involved with. Come on, is that true for you? I raised my hand. True my for me. wife is my mentor. And, and so, you know, <laughs> when Pilate was making the most critical decision in history, you talk about a 30 second question. That's right. What to do with Jesus? He came to his he wife. He gets a note from his wife. Yes. Who says, Knucklehead, I yeah. know who he is. Yeah. I had a dream. He's a righteous man. <laughs> You're trying to figure it out. Listen Ooh, to me. Oh, boy. And so, uh, the home advantage this year is going to be big for business. This yes. dear lady only needs to look at network marketing options, look at the top five network marketing companies yes. because that's the lowest cost, easiest formula for being able to begin wealth. But she must begin to curate an audience yes. to market to. Yes. And that's another strategy, and that's utilizing social media out of the home. Yes, very powerful. In fact, these little things here are weapons. They're either weapons of prosperity or weapons of calamity. They could destroy a marriage. We've seen it. So to govern your business, to start out, first, I recommend healthy boundaries. You've got to establish boundaries, and boundaries in three components. And maybe we'll have these up on the screen for you, but if not, write these down. Number one, you've got to have a mission and a vision. You have got to articulate, and I talk about this in my book, 30 Second Solution, that you've got to substantiate a cause. Don't just wake up and say, I need to make more money. What can I do? Even if you're a big business owner, you're worth $100 million, like some of our clients, they still must have a cause. What, what's the driving force that gets you up and moving every day? Number two, write down a vision statement. It's a one-line statement. I write about this in my book, page 65, I think. Don't quote me on that. Mm -hmm. um, but the point is, as is, is I was talking to my little girl, which is one of the keys of writing a vision statement, 
and my little girl is 11 years old, Doc, and I said to her, honey, do you understand what daddy does? Because if it's too elaborate, if my, if my little girl can get it down, everybody can get it down. I remember when I was authoring books, the publisher would tell me, remember, people, write at a third grade reading level. Don't try to be Mr. Articulate. Or, and, and take that advice, starting a business, make it plain. And then the mission, of course, is how are you going to fulfill it? What's the mission here? How are you going to accomplish this thing? By this date, you've got to establish goal setting because if you don't, you're just planning to fail. You fail to plan, plan to fail. Thirdly, uh, fourth, what I want to do a, uh, an arrow back to what Dr. Lance was saying because that was absolutely prolific. This tool in social media is so powerful, <laughs> and I'll wrap up this question. We'll move on to the next one with a story quickly. Um, stay home mom. Excuse me, not stay home, not yet. Mother, car accident, became a paraplegic overnight. She says, I have a little boy. What am I going to do? This is our livelihood. Long story short, she starts a home-based business on eBay. Within six months, she's making $10,000 a month selling purses that she loves. She can't walk. And I forget who it was, one of the big media outlets did a story yeah. on her and there's yeah. her son playing in the background. She's always loved this particular handbag. UPS and all the mail carriers came to the house. She never needed to leave $120,000 a year. Of course, the corporate job didn't even come close to what she was making. Nothing is impossible for them that believeth. When God's word says that, he's not playing around. Is he, Doc? I, I'm so sold on that. I almost feel like praying right now. In the name <laughs> of Jesus, if you need yes. an inspiring home job, yes. the home advantage is yours this year. Yes. We agree together that you're going to have the desire of your heart this year. Very important. There's going to be a breakthrough in homes bringing wealth. Do you know the word for uh, in the Greek for home is oikos? It's the root mm. word of economics. Wow. Which means that economics starts at home. Business starts at home. That's it. That's and then it. the garden goes out into your dominion. So we just we agree together. We agree right now for the establishment of the home advantage in the yes. body of Christ. That is just prolific. I, I had never heard that e economy. Well, if you think about it, that makes sense, and it's a great segue into our second um, question, which reads: I have a prominent spending problem. I make a lot of money, but I spend a lot of money. Please, coach, help me. Well, my dear or gentlemen. Um, you know I am the coach now, so coaches work muscles that uh, need flexing, and you may wake up tomorrow morning a little sore, but my intention is pure. It's the SD principle, which nobody wants to hear, including coach, self-discipline. And this, but, but I have an antidote to self-discipline, and you're going to love this, Lance. Um, self-discipline rewards itself in the immediate Self-discipline awards itself in the immediate. You get immediate satisfaction when you have said no to the second piece of pie. Oh, that's interesting. If you're trying to lose weight, right? So, I never thought of it that way. If, if you set a goal, well, I mean, think about it. If you really can control yourself from not yelling at someone, when you walk away, you'll say to yourself, God, I really did a good job not getting upset in that situation. Of course, I'm coming back to my Italian roots with that old school temper I used to have that would just fly off at a handle. Right. As, I, as I would say to myself, don't, learn to be a gentleman, hold back, be, be more sensitive to their feeling. You know, it's not about you. Mm -hmm. uh, it was always about me, 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 me. No, 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 what about the other person? If you begin a mindset that thinks about that, I mean, how about picking up a charity to help? Um, and the satisfaction that comes from the law of reciprocity, right? Perpetuating goodness and giving. Right. It'll actually help you optimize stewardship, which is the second principle, right? You could probably right. elaborate. Well, but what you're, what you're drilling down on now, and it connects to your book on 30 Second Solutions, is that we have to recondition our mind and a body and emotion around quality decision-making. Yes. Because transformation comes from the renewing of the mind so what's the role of the anointing? Well, the anointing is going to give you the grace to be able to say yes to what you need to say yes to and no to what you need to say no to. But like you said, 
Self-discipline or self-control is the master aptitude. Master aptitude. If you master that, you yes. can master every aptitude you need in life. Absolutely. And it only takes 30 seconds to say, uh, I'm sorry, I apologize. Only takes 30 seconds to say, I love you. But what you only do is ingenious. I listen to you because that's what I do in my business. I listen to distinctions. You said that it's an immediate gratification. Now, most people think of self Control is self-denial, right. and denial means delayed gratification. Delayed. But, but you're saying it's an immediate endorphin. That's right. It's an immediate good feeling That's right. when you make the choice that is the disciplined choice. And no I, one, never, I never heard that before. I love it. You, you bring the best out of me, and he brings the best out of other people. Take a look at this. They said, Lance, you know, in your generation, the baby boomers are going to have like a, like a $20 trillion financial transitions happening with baby boomers, you know, as you guys are coming of age, your parents are dying, and that's happening. He said, but the millennials have a $70 trillion global transfer of wealth. And their main passion is to make a difference and do something. They need, we need you to be fathers to this generation that's going to have the wealth that's going to shape the future. Wasn't that powerful? See, Dr. Lance, that's exactly what I'm talking about. That excerpt that you articulate and how you deliver is just so unique. I mean, you're just such a brilliant, and I want you to hear this, our advisors, you need to follow him on Twitter because you can keep Dr. Lance with you at any time, any day, and pick up <laughs> on this level 10 mindset, yeah. which is really what we're talking about, is the excellence in business. I mean, the Four Seasons has it with hospitality. Churches do it with accommodation. I right. mean, small mom and pop shops do it with cleanliness. Absolutely. So the spirit of excellence that we're talking about in business, of course, comes from the Hebrew word uh, yatir, yatir, yeah. yatir, which means to go above and beyond. It, in, it incorporates helping others, respect. I'm looking at my notes here. Hospitality, customer it, service. It, look, this is hot off the press. Last night, this is in Cannes. Last night, we sat up in, in your room yep. and drilled down and prayed and asked the Lord, what what actually needs to be said today yes. that's going to be timely and prophetic to change people's lives? Absolutely. So these words are, are critical for someone right now to listen. Yes. God wants you to yatir. The word yatir, yatir in the Hebrew means the mountain that juts out higher than everyone else. God wants you to stand out yes. in Babylon. It's the word that was used to describe Daniel. Yes. But the interesting thing is the Latin word we found out for mediocre. Mediocre in Latin is halfway up your mountain. Halfway. If you're not standing out in the spirit of excellence, then you're operating in mediocrity. And That's if you're right. operating in mediocrity, you're only tapping into half the potential God gave you. You talk about one of the greatest fundamentals of operating business is done in big government. And this is the yeah. type of insight that we're bringing to government officials, to world leaders all over the world, that you have the ability to lead from a level 10 mindset which is what we're introducing and what Dr. Lance is right. articulating that's combining the spirit of excellence, which I'm endorsing, full-blown how he has orated this, the, the mind of excellence wrapped with humility that says, hey, God, can you help me? Just that simple request and then combining it with kindness, generosity, uh, uh, goodness. Man, you're stepping right into it. The business leaders, listen what Coach Ron's talking about. He's touching on a territory now that says that the number one distinction that makes your company succeed in a highly competitive environment is the ability to anticipate market changes and make decisions not based on what's happening now, but based on what's about to happen next. Okay. You take Steve Jobs. You take uh, powerful entrepreneurs. By the way, Donald Trump, as a businessman, I know him. Yes. His forte is the ability to anticipate where the hockey puck is going and That's move right. down in front of it and grab yes. it. That's why he's so, he's so uh, maddening in yeah. his media capability because I, I he always, anticipates where to go. I always, t you're so right on. I always share with my clients, I tell them, listen, you don't just pay me to hit the mark. You also pay me to observe where the potential and warfare the, is coming exactly. from. And I wish I could say that I coined that, but that has come from the sages of the ages and the greatest generals in the world. Right. where they were navigating warfare, right? Not only the path to prosperity, but the path of warfare to avoid. It is less expensive to prevent. It is less, prevention is something that is, is invaluable. If we could save a hundred million dollar catastrophe, it will save us billions. You understand? And, and, and I, wanna, I wanna set 
something in place right now. So I, I, you might not talk about it, but I want to get it in this segment. You and I both do diagnostic assessments of organizations, yes. companies, yes. because we need data. That's right. Now, when you take data, and we put them and in you these pretty it, reports, and you put them in pretty reports, yes. but when you mix data yes. with the ten time factor, which is Daniel was ten That's times right. smarter and wiser than, yes. than the other men in Babylon. The 10 time multiplier is the prophetic ability to see what the data is saying. That's right. Like somebody yes. was saying to you, why are we paying all that money? Yes. You know, when we could get a piece of paper, he said, yeah. it's not the piece of paper. It's like the it's x-ray. Not. It's not the cost of the x-ray. It's the cost of the interpretation of what I'm looking at. That's right. It's the interpreter or the clinician. For example, I learned this taking blood pressure, servicing blood pressure patients when I was in school to get my strength and conditioning license. Well, a woman, one of my clients at the time, she was going to a specific hospital, we won't mention, you'd know who it was, and they said you didn't have high blood pressure. Well, I took out an old school cuff rather than this electric, elaborative, pretty thing, maybe a pretty document, right? Pretty thing. I put it on, I, I said, ma'am, can you lay down on the floor as well? So I took it as the clinician in two different positions, one upright and the other one supine, and when I looked at it, I said, Madam, you've got hypertension. Had I put her on that treadmill via the observation of another clinician. With electronic data versus With old the electronic, school. right, without being sensitive right. and hearing that business excellence. Now, it took me longer, right, because we know that time is a factor in business. We're right. trying to rep out profitability or move to the next patient if you're an MD or a nurse. But in this case, it saved a woman's life. She could have gone on the treadmill and died. And we'll, we'll have these up. You go to the website. Uh, our website is Level10U. Level, it'll be on the screen there. We've got so many of these sites. But the Level10U will help you understand how you can get in touch with us. And we assess uh, whether small, large, or uh, medium-sized companies and just knock it out of the park with overlays Absolutely. on all your people. And, and by the way, with the data, with the data that, that we're uh, studying, the number one challenge that we've seen with businesses is that a strength overextended becomes a weakness. A strength so over, yes. when whatever you have is a That's strength good. that got you where you are right now. It's That's the right. Samson principle. Oh boy. Samson wasn't taken out for the reason people think. Peter wasn't, was, didn't fumble under stress That's because right. of the reasons people think. When you're gifted, yes. Peter was a revelator. He would speak and say things. Jesus said to him, thou art blessed, Peter. Yes. Because Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living yes. God. He got a revelation. Yes. His mouth was his strength and his mouth was his problem. I, I remember Bishop T.D. Jakes looking at me, who I absolutely love, uh, who has spoken deeply into my life, uh, did the endorsement on my book. Um, he said to me, encourage these leaders, these pastors, to develop not only boards, but develop business boards. Because we want to make sure that we are operating in excellence by hiring the right people because you are who you surround yourself right. with. And if you don't put into the people that are around you by having the right data, the data validates it and then having the witness, which is the element of excellence. It's the yielding. The, the organic businessman does not operate in the precepts of old to validate the new. He takes from the old legacy, applies it to knowledge, and asks for innovation. There you go. You, you become right. the innovator because you take what is and make it better. And, and let's make this real simple and Bible, because here's what it comes down to. When he, the spirit of truth, shall come, he will lead you into all truth and will show you things to come. Yes. The helper, yes. the Holy Spirit, yes. will help you see things that are coming in your field. That's right. And so... With the right people around you who are seers. There's the key. Now, here's the key. Yes. Alone, you have a certain... You know, it's like driving at night with your headlights on. You have 100 yards of visibility. But when you drive in unity with the right partnership... Wow. You double your ability to anticipate the future. Well, sure. Two is better than one. A three-fold cord because, is not easily broken. you're going to yes. be... The gift of the Holy Spirit for you is going to give you insight and things to come in your lane. Yes. And if I try to get in your lane, yes. I'm blocking your gift. But if I move in my lane and you move in yours, we both now have expanded the field of what we can see. Now, see, this is why Dr. Lance and I are coming together. I pulled him in. He pulled me in. But here's something to mention. The excellence of business 
is that you both are operating from a congruent conduit of humility because there is no usurping authority. It's the end time movement of businessmen Indeed. Who are coming together and they march arm in arm, as Joel said. They do not skip they don't rank. They thrust each other. They don't thrust each other. Right. Pastors, this will eliminate church splits. This will eliminate divorce in your home. This will eliminate catastrophe with your staff. And training and coaching is at the hub. It is Absolutely. the zenith. It is the pinnacle it of is, excellence. It is the yatir. It is the yatir. what we do. Yatir, if you've just joined us, is, of course, the Hebrew word for excellence. And we are discussing the platforms of operating in excellence in business, which creates an unlimited influx of two components, self-worth and net worth, which is really, at the end of the day, of course, organizations are in business for a profit, and that's okay. Absolutely. My wife looked at me for years, and she says, you know, I'm in this relationship to develop fruit. I want to know right. that as we grow and we grow, we're nurturing and developing. Anything that's stagnant is not moving. And stagnicity collects, collects as parasite. So as you're developing your organizations in your churches, remember that movements move. Am I right about Absolutely. it? Absolutely. There, there's a perpetuation. And, and, and the other thing is to not feel guilty. Here's where Christians self-sabotage in business. Let me hit something very strong. Christians know they're supposed to be generous. And we know we're not supposed to be all about the money. It's about the people. That's right. So we have that internal dialogue. Yes. Then we have to make some hard choices. Yes. About profitability, and maybe this person is better than that person. That's right. But we start thinking out of the wrong matrix, like yes. sympathy. Well, but they've been with us a long time. Now, here's the point. When you have competing commitments, a commitment to trying to be generous and humble, and at the same time that you have a commitment to being profitable and getting results, the two hit each other, cancel each other out, and we end up mediocre. Mm. Now the guy who's totally about profit and excellence is dominating the field. That's right. And we're not getting visible. And we're wondering why. Right. Here's why. You're in a business to make a profit. Yes. Your profit is for the purpose. If you have a mission statement for what you do with the money, then it's sanctified for you to go for the money. That's it. But when you put the theology and business into the same blend at the same time, but you feel guilty about profitability. That's right. You sabotage your profits. You don't need to feel guilty about being wealthy. Hear me clearly, because here's the scripture, and it's predicated on our theme of excellence. Ecclesiastics, Solomon wrote this, who by far was one of the wealthiest in the world, if not the. Well, he was. He said, wisdom is a defense, as money is a defense. They're both defenses. End of discussion. Comma, but the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom brings life. And when I hear you oh, talk, that's brilliant. the wisdom that you just, just gave that. is what creates the balance of optimizing how do I continue to make money and not feel guilty about it and balance my sanctified life because I love God so much and I want to do more for his kingdom. Absolutely. More, right? More so for his work. So therefore, we have to have one hat that has this, as I call it, killer sheep. Yes. You're there to do business, make a profit, to crush it and dominate the field God gave you. This is powerful. God gave you that field. You've got to be preeminent. That's right. But what you do with your preeminence, your prestige, your money, and your social capital is where your values are revealed. And value produces longevity. And listen, we're out of time, but we're so grateful you're here. Visit us online, capture us live on Periscope, Twitter, and Facebook. Dr. Lance and I are going to be back next week to give you more. God cares about your leadership ability. He has deep concern as to what you're going through. And that's why I'm so excited to offer you my best-selling book, The 30-Second Solution. Take a look at what Bishop T.D. Jakes has to say about this. I want to congratulate Ron Kardashian on his book, 30-Second Solution. Give this book a read. It's powerful. It's life-changing. 30-Second Solution? You need to check this out. To take advantage of this product offer, please visit Leader10.com. For your donation of $15 or more, your postage and handling is covered. It's time to take the limits off of you, and that can happen in a matter of 30 seconds.